They say when you love your work, the distinction between the weekday and the weekend blurs. But when the office is so pretty, that line blurs even further. So let's get chatting with the management of Nestle. Suresh Narayanan joins us on The Weekender today. But I started with a person loving their job so much, showing their passion towards their job. Comes from uh, the age-old Saint Kabir himself, who I gather you're a big fan of and you follow him a lot. One of the uh, uh, the dohas that Kabir had used uh, in order to explore uh, leadership and to explore the world, he said, Jin dunda tin paiya, gehre pani paiti, jin dunda, jo khojega, wohi paiga, gehre pani paiti, which is inside, the, deep in the water, he'll find the, the treasure. Mein budi dubandari. Hmm. Me, an old person, dubne ke gabrad se dari, rahi kinare baiti. <laughs> so, I think all our lives are the lives of uh, not only cherishing what we have, but also discovering uh, new things. For me, uh, you know, Nestle has been a, has been a very, very inspiring journey. Uh, every morning I get up, uh, Manglam, I uh, am energized. Energized by the thought that I am going to be meeting a lot of young, energetic, driven people uh, carrying forward the, not only the cause of the company, but also carrying forward their lives. As you know, my role is more of an orchestra conductor <laughs> uh, rather than the musician himself. But uh, that is the joy. The joy of leadership is to be able to rediscover yourself in the actions of others. You know, you said Jin Dhunda Tin Paiya. Um, what are you searching for right now from a company standpoint? From the company uh, uh, standpoint, I'm, I'm looking at uh, new, new pastures and new avenues for, uh, for growth. I mean, we have been a successful company over 100 years in this, in this country. We have some of the most iconic brands uh, hmm. that are there with us. And yet there is even more. I mean, the inflection point of India has arrived. Today, aspirations need to be met with availability. And I think the Indian consumer, uh, despite all the, the talk of uh, you know, global recession and, mm. and various other economic pressures because of the war and other things, I think India is still a buzzing place. Yeah. Indian consumers are still willing to, uh, to try new things, but try basis the trust that they have uh, in brands. And I think Nestle is truly blessed to have brands that have been trusted over decades. And that trust, I mean, periodically being tested as well and coming out yes, uh, with yes. flying colors. I think, I think ultimately, you know, I mean, uh, as I keep telling my team, uh, we are on a perpetual roller coaster. You know, there was a time when we were on a, on a steady state conveyor belt. <laughs> the conveyor belt has now given way to a roller coaster. The principles will be still the same. The ability to anticipate and, and, and be agile. Could you give me some example of... Uh, how agile and flexible Nestle has become uh, since the time you took over? Uh, the corpus of the portfolio that Nestle has globally hmm. is about 2,000 or more brands. But the presence in India itself of brands was a lot more limited yeah. in, terms of, uh, in terms of presence, in terms of innovation, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, presentation to consumers. One of the things that came out of our learnings, out of our, our, our crisis that we faced some years ago, one of the things we, we question ourselves is our pace of innovation. Right. And I'm happy to say that uh, today, using the same processes, because one thing is to jettison everything hmm. and say, you know, I'm not going to care for any of the processes, any of the, of, the, of the safety nets that the company works on, and just look at launching products without any, uh, any consumer meaning or insight. That's not the Nestle way. Nestle goes through a deliberate process. We go through a deliberate process, except that today we don't have two things. One, we don't have a fear of failure. Hmm. And secondly, speed, speed of response. If something is 60, 70 percent ready to go, then go. Right. Don't wait for perfection to happen. And today, post uh, the crisis, we have launched almost 123 new products. Our pace of innovation, Mangalam, is three to four times faster than it was 10 years ago. So, and it contributes about five to six percent of our sales. 
So I see this and it also uh, generates, spawns other things. Hmm. Our innovation in products has led to innovation in process. Uh, we have today uh, the, the analytics and digital project called Midas yep. uh, in the company, which incidentally uh, in the last uh, uh, annual general meeting of the, of the, of the company, uh, the global CEO announced is being rolled out globally now, the mm. Midas that came out of India. Yes. What does all of this boil down to? I mean, I'm just looking at, uh, you know, the most important parameter in an FMCG company, according to me, would be the sales of a company. Uh, sales led by volume, sales led by premiumization, sales led by some price hikes, if at all. Um, what's the aspiration for Nestle going from here? I mean, um, are you looking at mid-teens sales growth? Are you looking at double-digit volume growth? Uh, how do you define that aspiration? Look, I think one of the simple models, Manglam, that we set for forth uh, eight years ago hmm. is what we call the grow-to-win model. Okay. Grow-to-win simply means penetration-led volume growth. Even, a, even an evolved category has got an annual penetration of 35-40%, hmm. right? Uh, 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 and in some categories, it goes up to 80%. But if you were to look at it on a monthly basis, the penetration levels falls quite uh, significantly to almost half of that. Which means what? That people need to buy more of the category, more frequently into the category, and more of the category. What was counterintuitive then was, um, why is it then you had to phase out the low unit packs or leave important price points in some of your star products, case in point, something like Maggie? Look, I think one of the things, and there is more, uh, two things are happening in this country. Yeah. One is uh, the, what we call the popularly positioned uh, price products. Hmm. It's still about a third of our portfolio. Okay. So it's not that, that's, that's not an important part of the portfolio. Hmm. It's still a third of the portfolio and growing very well. And in fact, becoming the driver, uh, the front end of the, of the, of the charge into the, into the urban markets. The other thing which is happening is there is premiumization taking place. So we are operating in both the vectors. Now, last year was an unprecedented inflation for us. The average inflation that we had to combat on an annualized basis was anywhere between 20 to 22 percent. Now, obviously, this meant that some of it we could find the avenues for in mm -hmm. terms of what we call uh, the shark savings, which is uh, buying smarter, buying longer, and being more efficient in your recipes. And the second part was really to look at other costs that we were able to, to mitigate as an organization, and finally look at pricing. Okay. And in looking at pricing, there were some parts of the portfolio that needed to be touched. But we, we touched those parts of the portfolio where we knew that we also have an upgradation of the portfolio strategy okay. that is there in place. Maggie was a case in point, that there was an upgradation strategy there. It is in motion now, so I would not say that the journey has ended. Okay. But in order to mitigate some of the pain points of moving out of price points, right. some of the things, Mangalam, I think a crisis brings hmm. is the ability to think outside the box. And I think that is, uh, prepares us well for times which where we might face this in the future, but yet we are capable of uh, taking it uh, head on because of the capabilities that we have built. That reminds me of another Kabir Doha, which says, Dukh mein sumiran sab kare, sukh mein kare na koi, jo sukh mein kare to dukh kahe ko hoi. Absolutely. Which is basically what you're doing. You're sticking to the process during the good times, so that during, when the bad times come, you will be pretty ready. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Was there any impact of uh, the price point movement on the market share? Look, I think uh, in, 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 in some categories, and certainly in, in Maggie, and I referred to this earlier, hmm. Uh, there was an impact on volumes okay. because uh, obviously the, the price point uh, that we moved out was quite, uh, quite sharp. But I'm happy to say that I think we have stabilized okay. and now we are building back. On average, if you look at the company's performance in hmm. the last uh, six to seven years, uh, we have been uh, averaging a double digit. So about 10-11% on average growth, consisting of a price impact of about 3% and volume of about 7-8%. to 8%. Right. We have maintained the, the charter of the growth engine of the of uh, of the company, strong and secular for all these years. Uh, last year, uh, we grew at 14 percent, but the volume uh, yes. delivery was lower than that. That has now again started to recover back. In the last quarter, 
our results had about a 5% volume growth about 2 to 1.5 mix which mm. i count it as a positive sign yes. that there is a that there is an upgrading that is happening so about 7.5% and the balance 14 odd percent was the price impact as we go forward we are expecting that the volume uh, uh, led growth will will strengthen over a period of time provided of course that the mm. the, the the inflation which looks to be uh, as of now a little bit more temperate Mm. Uh, tempered as compared to what it was. Okay. If this continues, then I think we'll be back into the journey of penetration-led volume growth, which is the mantra that we will use as a company. So, you know, uh, with all the building blocks that you're putting in place, with the CapEx, with the Rurban, with, you know, the digital uh, tools that you're building, is there a case for volumes to structurally go higher into double digits with some mid-single digit sort of price growth? You've been averaging around 11-12% over the last seven years. Can this grow to 15%? I certainly see, I certainly see this. I think, I think the pace of premiumization hmm. uh, and uh, the acceleration in some categories uh, will definitely uh, give us that opportunity. But we are, there are also new categories. Hmm. Uh, I mean, for example, I'm very excited about our uh, uh, entries into uh, breakfast cereals, into pet care, and into health sciences. Yeah. You know, health sciences for me is, is, a, is, 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 is a very nascent, but yet a very promising category. Uh, we operate in about seven categories there. This would be better value, not necessarily great volume, because there will be relatively yes. small, but greater, uh, better value products, so that the mix between volume and value uh, will be something that we'll be able to, to accelerate even further as we go forward. 5,000 crore capex, historical asset turns would suggest, uh, you know, it could double your business from current levels. Is that what your idea is? I mean, this capex. How do you look at it? How is it? You looking at it from a sales CAGR standpoint of 10 to 15 percent over the next few years? Do you look at it as uh, suboptimal utilization until your distribution ramps up, and then you go full blown? Uh, how exactly do you look at it? Look, I think I think the whole uh, the, the philosophy of the organization is to secure the growth engine. Hmm. I believe uh, Mangalam, having been in the trenches for a long time, growth can be a panacea yeah. for many of the detractors that you come across the way. So securing the growth engine is clearly the most important task ahead of me and my team. Hmm. And there, penetration-led volume growth is a key um, uh, lever that we will be using. And I think as a consequence of this, the capexes that we have planned uh, about 2,600 crores in the last couple of years and about 5,000 crores going forward for mm -hmm. the next uh, three years are meant to create capacities that is ahead of demand. Okay. Now, we can't be waiting uh, for uh, asset utilizations of 100% and then say, now I'm going to build a factory. Now, a couple of weeks back, I was in, uh, in Varanasi mm -hmm. and uh, driving down to Ghazipur. In the old days, it used to be a dirt track. Yes. Today, it is a six-lane highway. I was talking to one of our distributors. He said, sir, distribution has become so much easier. Now, uh, tell me, Mangalam, distribution becoming easier makes products more accessible. It generates employment. There's a retailer out there, consumers out there. The brand reaches is, 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 is improving. I go to a 2,000 population village, mm. and I ask the, the, the uh, we have got a Swabiman program, uh, a yeah. rural uh, village entrepreneur, women entrepreneur program. And I asked this lady, I said, uh, which uh, uh, brand amongst the ones that you got here uh, has got the maximum love and traction? And she said, Kit Kat. Now, I could never have imagined five years ago or 10 years ago that Kit Kat will be a brand of choice in a 2000 population village. And uh, as I keep telling my team, the time for a Nestle has come. Har aadmi ka vakt aata hai. Kabir said beautifully, he said, dheere dheere se mana. Dhire sab kuch hoi, mali sinche sau ghada, ritu aaye fal hoi. The gardener takes 100 buckets of water <laughs> and puts it on the plant, on the seed. But ritu aaye, only when the spring happens, will the fruit happen. So you are hoping that, that the weather is favorable for India's growth. Uh, you know, on this village uh, distribution itself, uh, rural accounted for what, 20-25% of yes, your sales, sir. much lower than everyone else. Do you have an aspiration of increasing that? And uh, distribution, with you increasing your reach, 
how does that change your product strategy? Or does your product strategy remain and the distribution just feeds your current strategy? Look, I think, uh, you know, I must say, Bangalore, that looking at the rural-urban kind of, uh, there is no ambition that I want to get my rural sales to 50% or 60%. Yes. For me, the penetration game is as much alive in mega cities and metros as it is in tier two, tier uh, six cities. Is there a number and, uh, to rural. that? Uh, I mean, say for instance, uh, can you say that, okay, this penetration led gain would get me an additional 10% of sales every year or an additional 5%. How, how does one look at it like look, that? Look, I think, I think the, the, the growth vector is definitely faster in the smaller towns hmm. because of the lower base. Yes. Uh, we are able to using the power of analytics and digital to really geo-target uh, even PPP products within urban agglomerates. Earlier, we did not have that capability to be able to uh, digitally sharp focus and, and uh, uh, geo-target the kind of uh, launches and products and portfolio that we were looking at. Today, we are able to do it. Along with that, there is a huge amount of activation as well. No, one of the things that we are doing in, in, in small towns and in, uh, in rural India uh, is participating. I think last year we, we had about 20, 25,000 hearts, hmm. uh, which is the village affairs, where Nestle participated. Yes. That's a fantastic way to get both visibility and to get trials. I think the only mantra that I've given my, my, my team is growth, growth, growth. 